Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We have the casual setup again this week. Um, so I hope you guys are okay with that. The sound seemed like it turned out okay. So um, it's just the, the lighting that isn't so great. So I will get that set up again one of these days and we'll record again on my uh, nicer camera. But here we are again with the vlog camera. I We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna answer a question, a version of a question that has come in a few times recently. Um, that seems to be something that's pretty popular. So I am going to talk about that. Um, before I do, I, I want to just mention, um, I think this was on the video, I think it was on the vlog where I talked about how I wasn't able to show what I was working on as much. Um, and that was part of my motivation for wanting to do more of these kind of um, informal chat on a particular topic type videos. Um, and a lot of you have commented and messaged and emailed um, saying, um, well, couldn't I just record the stuff that I'm not able to show and then save it? And in theory, yes, I could, but there's a few reasons um, that it's not just not practical. And it, it certainly is something I've thought of too. So thank you to everybody who, who suggested that. But the challenge with it is that many of these things um, are very complex. And so uh, they're taking hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> to make. So to film all of that would, um, it would be another thing to do when I am already kind of managing a lot logistically and trying to finish things as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, especially for filming art, like it actually takes uh, a little bit of time, a little bit of extra time to make sure the lighting is good enough and the angle is good enough. And I'm, you know, having to stop every 25 minutes and press the record button again. So uh, just logistically, that's an added challenge that doesn't make a lot of sense when I'm already trying to work as fast as I can. And then also uh, I, I would fill up so many SD cards and um, yeah, so I love that idea. I wish it were practical because um, I think it would make really cool videos to be able to say, after the fact, like, oh, here's this secret project and here's the the work that actually went into it. Um, so maybe at some point when there's a smaller one, I could do that. But um, yeah, right now that's that's why we're, we're taking this approach and why I'm not doing that. Anyway, on to the so uh, subject, the topic of today's video, which is um, basically to cold email or not to cold email. So I got this question from Jasper. Jasper um, is a subscriber and also supports me over on Patreon. So thank you very much, Jasper. And thank you for this question. Um, and they asked, I would like to know if you ever reached out to magazines and art directors, like mailing promotional cards uh, in your early days. And if you did, how did you find those magazines and art directors? How many did you send out? What did you include in the mail? And do you think it helped you get any work? So uh, I get Get this question a lot. Uh, this is well, I get versions of this question a lot, and um, I have actually talked about this somewhat recently in a video. I think the title of the video was like the the one thing you should focus on um, if you're a beginning artist or a newer artist or getting started in illustration. So um, overall, if if you're familiar with that video, Jasper, that would still pretty much be my answer to this. And if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it on the screen and in the description. But um, yeah, we'll. We'll circle back to that at the end. For now, I will get started with saying that, um, yes, I did reach out to magazines and art directors in my early days. Um, and, uh, but overall I didn't do that until some had first reached out to me. So initially I was just making work, putting it out there. Uh, and I've shared this before too, but I didn't, I wasn't even, I wasn't trying to do it professionally initially. I was just trying to come up with something that I could do that would be positive and would make me feel productive when I was really sick. So, um, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't angling to do it, um, to do it commercially. And it didn't even really occur to me to do it until somebody first reached out to me until people were reaching out to me asking to, you know, buy prints. And then somebody, um, I, I'm trying to remember whether it was lucky with their lucky peach. I think lucky peach was my first editorial commission and they had reached out to me and then a packaging place, a packaging client reached out to me. So after that, then I was like, Oh yeah, maybe I could do this professionally. And so then I started looking kind of more intentionally into, um, sending out promo and trying to pursue clients. So yes, I think I've done two physical print runs, like two times. And that would be since 2013, it's 2020. So two times 
times in the past six or seven years uh, that I've actually created postcards or some sort of mailer and sent them out. So it's not something I've done a lot of. I think the first one was in maybe 2014 or 2015. And then the second was uh, the second one was in 2017 or 2018. I, I could find the dates. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. I'd have to look up like my past orders on Moo or something and see when I had done that. Um, and I've done a few rounds as well of cold emailing. So, you know, you were mentioning postcards, but I, I kind of put that all in the same bucket, like uh, promo and reaching out to art directors. And I've def definitely done more cold emailing than I have of the postcards. But overall, I mean, I think maybe, maybe it's averaged to once a year. Maybe I've done it five or six times since I got started in uh, cold emailing. Um, it's not at all been something I've done a ton of for any of these, both for the postcards and for the cold emailing, e even more so for the postcards. It was really selective. It was like, you know, maybe 10 or 20 people that I sent them to. I didn't do a huge batch. I didn't do a ton of them. And on all of them, I did like handwritten notes and it, they were people that I had specifically picked that I thought I would really want to work with. Same thing, mostly for, for emails as well. You know, I never did like a big general to whom it may concern or to the creative department of thus and such publication, I always would like figure out the person's name and try to look up not just their work in the magazine, but like if they had done any personal work too, so I could have something to refer to. So all of it was pretty time intensive. And um, that's why the, the number that I sent out was actually pretty small. And I think um, yeah, I think for emailing, it would maybe be, you know, 20 or 30 max that I would be sending out each time, 20 or 30 emails max. And those are all, um, personally addressed and with personal specific details in them. There's a siren coming. Sorry. So have done the, the cold postcard, the, uh, mailer twice have done cold emails half a dozen times, um, both to pretty small lists. Uh, so did it help me get work? Um, it's tough to say a hundred percent for sure, because I have not been the greatest at always asking every client. So how did you hear about me? But, um, what I can say definitively is that, uh, if I were to write down all the lists of every, the, like write down all the names on both lists, both the physical mailers that I did and the emails that I've sent, um, if I were to put those down on a piece of paper, there would only be one, maybe two of those names that had actually reached back out to me. So the, the reason I can't say for sure that it didn't help is because, you know, say I sent, um, postcard to, um, who did I send it to? I, I, I think I sent, um, a, no, not a postcard. I reached out at one point to somebody from Real Simple. Um, and this would have been back in the beginning, but uh, way before I started working for Real Simple. And then eventually an art director who I had not reached out to reached out to me and was the one that ended up hiring me. So could I say for sure that whoever I sent it to didn't show the one who ended up hiring me uh, the postcard or the email or whatever it was? No, I can't say that for sure. But um, there's only ever been, I can, I can think of one time for sure, maybe two times that somebody that I sent something to actually reached back out to me and, and ended up hiring me. So um, it has been very, very small percentage of times. I think in terms of response rate, I've gotten about the average response rate. So, you know, if I send out 30 emails, there'll be, you know, three or four people that respond to me just saying that they like the work and, you know, thanks for reaching back out. And at this point, it's all, I'm mostly emailing the same people when I do that. And I try to do it <laughs> twice a year. I had hoped to do it four times a year, but that's just never going to happen. It had never has happened. So my new goal is to do it twice a year. Um, so I'm not like picking new people every time I'm, you know, continuing to kind of stay top of mind, hopefully for the people that I really want to work with. Um, so yeah, it's really not been a big work driver for me. Um, and when I do ask, when I have remembered to ask people how they found my work, um, it's always been like Instagram or Google or um, back in the beginning, I had quite a few people find me on Etsy. Uh, sometimes uh, there were a number of magazine contacts actually who had seen my work in Lucky Peach. So that was a really good one um, in terms of getting my work out there, getting my foot in the door early on. So yeah, not, not really a massive impact there. So uh, how did I find out 
where to send them and the lists of art vectors and what did I put in them. So you may not want to know the answer to this anymore now that I've told you how kind of ineffective this was. But if you are still interested and you're still game to um, to try to dig around a bit yourself, um, actually, before I say this, I will say other people have had more success with that. So cold mail, cold mailers and cold emails have been more successful for other people. And maybe I just needed to do more of them. Um, sorry, it's so loud. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe I just needed to send a lot more of them, but I never wanted to do the mass email and it just takes so long to put any of these things together that it didn't really seem practical to me to be trying to send out like, you know, a thousand emails. I, I don't know how I would have done that. And uh, any art directors I know or any like of the blogs that I've read or posts I've read from art directors, they all hate the mass email, the, you know, to whom, whom it may concern. And some of them for some larger places um, that do have submission guidelines, they'll like say that they won't even accept anything unless it's specifically personally directed to them. So um, yeah, that never seemed worthwhile. But you know, other people do have more luck with this. So if you want to try it, if you think you might have more luck with it, um, for this does vary industry by industry. So if it's, um, I'd have to make a separate video about this, I think for how I've, how I've done it with uh, packaging, um, art directors, how I've, how I've kind of gone about finding them and reached out to them. But again, it didn't really do anything. None of my packaging work has come from that. But um, for magazines, it's pretty simple. I went to, um, I've done this a couple of times, went to the bookstore around here, Barnes and Noble, used to be Borders, um, uh, was a bookstore as well that I, that I could go to and look around. But I go and get physical copies of magazines and I just get a big stack of uh, magazines in different industries and I look through, see which ones had illustration, see which ones had illustration that maybe, you know, my style could fit with. Um, and then I'd look on the masthead, which is the list at the front of the magazine that will say like the names of the people involved. It's basically like the credits of a movie. Um, and, uh, some magazines you can even look up online and they'll have their masthead on their website. Well, most of them will have their masthead on their website, but some of them will also have the art director's emails. So that's kind of the best case scenario is you have a magazine you want to work for, you look them up online and the contact info for the art director is right there. Um, it's actually counterintuitively, it's harder to find contact info for emails than it is for, um, for mailers. So if you want to do a mailer, it's pretty simple. You just find the address of the publication um, and you do it attention to the art director whenever you found their name. And if for some reason you can't find their name or it's not listed on the masthead, then I would just Google the name of the publication and the words. Um, you could try art director, you could try creative director, you could you could try design director. Um, any of those, um, any of those titles could and should bring up the person who uh, has that role within the company within the magazine. So um, that's how you would find the name of the person, and then you just the, the address for any place should be usually the mailing address for a magazine is pretty easy to find. And if you can't find it, just Google mailing address for X magazine or whatever blank magazine. Uh, for emails, yes, if they're listed on the masthead, that's the easiest way to go about it. But I don't know, that's a smaller fraction of the time. I feel like most magazines don't list the emails on the masthead. Um, <clears throat> but what you can do is Google the name of the person. So say you found it either on the printed masthead or the uh, magazine's website doesn't have their emails listed. Take the name of the creative director and just Google their name plus email address. So uh, if if it doesn't bring anything up, sometimes it will just bring something up. It's going to be pretty obvious. Maybe they have their own website and their emails listed right there on their website. A lot of, a lot of art directors are also illustrators or designers themselves. So they may have their own independent website. Um, and, uh, that being said, if, if they have their own website and their website, their email that they list there is not, oh my gosh, is not their work email. So like say they work for Real Simple um, and they have just like a regular Gmail address. I I have never heard this said, but like my personal instinct is that it's kind of bad form to email their Gmail address with a pitch for working 
with them at Real Simple. So I um, that that could be a last resort, but personally I wouldn't do that myself. Another way you can try to figure out an email is to just um, use kind of common sense and try a few different variations. So most companies, it's either going to be like first name, last name, or first name, dot, last name, or first initial, last name, first name, last initial. There are only so many different combinations you can do. And if it doesn't go through and you get a bounce back, um, then they're not going to see it. So it's not like they're going to be getting 20 emails from you. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just feel free to kind of keep trying different formulations until you have the one that works. And then once you have the one that works, if it's for a really big company, um, like, I don't know, the New York Times or something has tons of different art directors, then you'll know the email formula that the New York Times uses. There is also, uh, this is something that I have only, I only just found out about this and started doing this on my last batch of um, emails because there were few that were going to people who had moved companies so I didn't have their new email addresses um, and when I was googling when I was doing like the name of the art director and their email um, one of the things that came up was this company or website called Rocket Reach. Now it's a paid membership and you have to, I did not do it, um, cause it's super expensive and I wouldn't get that much use of that out of it, but it's a paid membership where you can basically find people's email addresses. But the thing that you can use on there for free, at least right now is if you, um, if you Google, um, the name, say Google, say you want to email somebody at, I don't know, like Wegmans, or I'm trying to think of any company in the world, Gap, I don't know, any company, the name, Google the name of the company and the word um, Rocket Reach, all one word, and um, Rocket Reach will pull up, that will pull up this page, it should, if it's still working, hopefully, um, that will pull up this page that has the different email formats for that company. So like I did this to find the email address for somebody at Starbucks and it showed me, okay, Starbucks has four different email formats and then it shows you how common each one is. So, you know, if the, the first one is what's used 75% of the time and then there's a, you know, something that's used 10% of the time and so on. Uh, so if you have the person's name and you have the email format, then it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, but just talking through all this, you can see how much time is required to, to go about doing this. And of course, you can try buying a list too. that. I don't have any experience with that. I've never done that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know how good it would be or not. Um, yeah. And back to my earlier point, too, that this none of this has ever really uh, produced any work for me. So I am still doing it on a small scale. I haven't sent out any, um, any mailers in a couple of years. I don't know that I'll do that again. I've sent out thank you things to clients that I have worked with. That seems worthwhile to me because they appreciate it. And, you know, getting repeat clients is, is really important in, in order to be able to sustain your business. Um, but yeah, it's a, a large amount of work, a large amount of time investment for very little reward. So you have to be the one to make the call of whether that's the right thing for you to do or not. Um, that's why I've kind of scaled it back and only really do it uh, once or twice a year and only then to people that I like would be my dream clients, people that I really want to work with. So I'm not just sending out this blanket thing to everybody who could possibly want a commission in illustration. They're only clients that I really want to work with. The last part of the question was, what do you recommend to beginning illustrators if they wish to be more proactive in finding work? Uh, and then in parentheses, besides producing more work and sharing it online. Unfortunately, that is the recommendation. That's the video that I mentioned earlier. That's the one thing that I recommend uh, beginning illustrators do is to focus on producing more work and putting it online. So um, if you're wanting to maybe take it a step beyond that, you could try submitting it to places like Creative Boom or um, uh, It's Nice That, any of those places that kind of showcase design and illustration. Uh, or if there's smaller design and illustration blogs, if you're just getting started, um, that's a way that you can kind of uh, help boost your visibility without spending all the time of like trying to track down these art directors and write them personal emails. So that would maybe be one thing, one additional thing that you could do, but um, definitely go watch that video and see if it feels like you're in that place where really what you should be working on mostly is, um, is your 
is creating work, is creating art. And um, I think I said this in that video, but I'll say it again here because it bears repeating. Uh, it can feel like it's going to be this really great productive uh, leg up thing that you can do. Or maybe, maybe you even feel like you should be doing it or like you're missing, like you're missing the boat or it's your, you're dropping the ball if you're not reaching out to people. And that's just not the case, especially early on. Um, if you look at the cost benefit like what you're going to get to the time that you put into doing something like this into researching and writing emails and getting prints made and doing all of that. If you're within, I hate to say anything too concrete because everybody's so different, but if you're within like the first year of trying to do this, um, I, I would, my personal feeling is that you probably would be better served for just spending that time on making the work and um, and putting it out there. So that can feel kind of deflating because I think when you are in that place, you're, you're wanting to focus on something that feels more concrete rather than just making work. Um, but just making the work is really what it's all about. And that's the most important thing. Um, as I'm saying this, <laughs> I, I did think of one other way that you could tweak it to kind of try to be a little bit more proactive active. Um, and it still has to do with making work. But I would say if you know that you're wanting to, it sounds like by your question, you're wanting to work in editorial illustration. So uh, then I would try to make sure that your work looks like editorial illustration. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it that way. Not looks like editorial illustration, but could be used as editorial illustration. So if you're um, wanting to do food illustration like me, try looking at food magazines and seeing how they use illustration and not just copying those illustrations, obviously thinking of your own subjects, maybe making up a, a little recipe or article for yourself to illustrate, but um, gear your work to the market that you want it to eventually end up in. So if you are wanting to do editorial illustration, recipe editorial illustration, but you're spending a lot of time doing like um, I don't know, fantastical pet portraits, then that's really not going to get you any closer to that other goal. So the, the best thing you can do is spend the time making work and making the work that is suited for the market that you eventually want to be in. So I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know, uh, as always, if you have any other questions and you can leave your comments where you leave the comments <laughs> down below in the video. Um, in the comments area. Oh my gosh, you guys, I need to go home. And thank you so much to everybody who has been sending in questions. They have been um, so great. I can't wait to make videos about all of them. Uh, I kind of even want to do like more than one uh, a week. I wish I could do more than one a week because um, there are just so many good questions and uh, it makes me really excited to get to talk about this stuff with you guys. So thank you to everybody who's asking them. If you want to ask a question, um, you can go to my uh, website, kendallhillagas.com backslash questions or you can email me. Um, yeah. And if you're new here, please do subscribe. We're making lots of these kinds of videos. I also do make art vlogs. Sometimes we'll be doing more of that <laughs> whenever I'm not working on top secret projects 24 seven. And uh, thank you so much to my patrons for supporting supporting this channel, for sponsoring it financially. Um, and thank you to Meg for editing. And thank you to all of you all for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.